Enough is enough. Enough is enough. Enough is enough. Enough is enough. Someone has been slacking on their cardio. Welcome back, beautiful and amazing human beings. This is Zukradevsky here of WeAreChange.org. A lot of very important information to get into today. As, of course, we're left with more questions than answers about the events that just recently unfolded in Texas. As there's some new bombshell, shocking information that, of course, we're going to be talking about on this broadcast and its larger implications. As, of course, the government that failed here on many levels is trying to use this event as a way to give themselves more power and authority over you. What's going on here? We're going to talk about that. Plus, the end of the World Economic Forum Davos meeting, which we're going to give a quick recap of. Surprise, it also doesn't work in your personal benefit. But before we begin, the clip that we played in the beginning of this broadcast was filmed by Elijah Schaefer in Houston, Texas, outside of a recent protest, with some people arguing that the government should take away some of their rights. Something, of course, that the wannabe technocrats at the World Economic Forum, like Klaus Schwab, probably liked to hear at the end of their meeting that just ended in Switzerland, where Klaus Schwab publicly thanked and glorified the Chinese government and talked about the great opportunity to change society for his and his buddies' liking. Thanks also to the leadership of China in terms of fighting the... <laughs> we have a great opportunity at this moment, like we had after World War II, to have in some way a new beginning in our global cooperation, in globalization, in managing our global affairs. This, as we're getting absolutely insane footage coming from China, we're not going to be uh, showing you some of the video footage here of just the absolute human rights atrocities that are being committed there. For Klaus Schwab to, to publicly, directly thank China and to support them on the world stage shows you exactly what their agenda is all about. As, of course, Klaus even brags publicly just recently, just a few days ago at the start of the World Economic Forum, where he says he and his buddies are the ones shaping and changing the world. Who are his buddies? Well, other attendees of the World Economic Forum, like Bill Gates, that openly talks about the need to reduce the population of the world, brags about how he's funding the reduction of the population, and how he's working in partnership with, of course, the corporate media like entities like MSNBC and Slate Magazine in order to propel those ideas even further. The World Economic Forum is also teaming up with the World Health Organization, the Biden administration, and, of course, setting up a global treaty that, of course, course, will override and usurp the U.S. Constitution and its sovereignty, according to Congresswoman Tulsi Gabbard, who says that if this World Health Organization treaty is enacted, it could, quote, dictate U.S. policy and track our every move via universal digital identification. You know, sort of just like the Chinese system that's already in play with, of course, a social credit score, because, you know, there's nothing safer, there's nothing smarter than giving up all of your power all of your sovereignty, all of your rights away to people who believe that there's too many people in the world and allowing them to track, trace, and database every single action that you do in this world. Yes, brilliant idea that, of course, the corporate media keeps propelling, pushing, and trying to manipulate the American public in order to do so. As, of course, recently, the head of the World Economic Forum sat with the CEO of Pfizer and said one of the biggest problems that they're facing is, of course, people not believing them, which he called conspiracy theorists, a.k.a. people who want transparency and accountability when it comes to major decisions for the world, which should be done through the people, not through, of course, the few private businesses and enterprises, corporations and banks that want to, of course, use an opportunity in order to, of course, benefit themselves directly. Yeah. There's a big there's a big difference there. What the corporate media is doing, promoting a lot of these sick, nefarious ideas is twisted. And that's why we strive to do the opposite here at We Are Change that Oregon. If you like what we're doing and want to support it, one very easy and best way to do so is by going on the bestpoliticalshirts.com where you could get amazing t-shirts that are very thought-provoking, that are very artistic, and are sure to bet create very interesting conversations in the wild, in the real world, whether embracing Karens or Kyles, or finding your fellow Chads and Chidettas. Chidettas? Chidettas? What's, what's the female version of Chad? Let me know down in the comment section below. But you can meet all of them. 
just by, of course, having a shirt that expresses a message doing your form of activism, letting people know that they're not alone, and more importantly, spreading ideas that, of course, cannot be censored online. We have shirts that we cannot show you here on this platform, but you could wear them. You could express these ideas to the general public, and this is one sure way of doing your part. Right now, I am in Sarasota, Florida. It's absolutely beautiful here. Of course, today is Memorial Day. I never stop working because I have a schedule. I stick to it, but yesterday, I, ha I had my day off. One of my friends here had, had a boat, took us on a boat. I saw so many. Let's go, Brandon, and other <laughs> political messages for the president here. It, it was overwhelming, and of course, everyone here was singing the praises of Let's Go, Brandon, just like the shirt that I'm wearing right now. Right now, which again, you could also get exclusively on the bestpoliticalshirts.com. I had a lot of people coming up to me, a lot of people saying, absolutely, great shirt. And if you want those genuine human interactions and getting away from the digital, online, tyrannical, algorithm controlled, technocratic spaces, get a shirt on the bestpoliticalshirts.com. Click the link down below and at least scroll through our very entertaining artistic renderings of some controversial political perspectives. Two new shirts, by the way, out this week as well, all the way on top. Check them out. Click the link down in the description below right now. Now, I think it's very fair to say ever since our last video that we did on Thursday, there has been a lot of new information surrounding the details of the event in Texas that unfolded that, of course, has a lot of people asking, what in the world is the government doing here? Why in the world am I funding a police department that doesn't protect and serve? Why do police departments argue in court and have won successfully many times that they don't need to actually help anyone or protect anyone? Why in the world are the events in Texas just the tip of the iceberg when you really start looking into this topic and finding out that a lot of police officers in many instances didn't do the right thing and stand down well of course throughout all these recent relevations people are finding out the true reality of the police department and now the same big government bureaucratic forces that put everything into play here that created these situations doesn't have an answer for you except for you need to give up more of your rights and freedoms and liberties because, because, uh, because, uh, well, they don't know. Because uh, who else is going to handcuff and pepper spray concerned parents about the safety of their children as police officers are standing outside for over 40 minutes kicking sand and waiting because admittedly they are afraid of getting hurt. And the horrible stories of what happened in Texas is really having a lot of people think about the way society works, what's really happening in our world, especially with crazy stories of even a mother who was urging the police officers to do something in Texas that was put in handcuffs, that was detained, momentarily arrested, released, got away from the police, jumped a fence, and then went into the classroom as police officers who were too afraid to do anything. And then she rescued her kids herself. Right now, people are raising money for this woman. There was also other parents in the crowd that were asking police officers to do something. Some of those parents lost their loved ones as we're finding out today that it was the police chief of, of that particular city in Texas that was the one in charge who decided for some reason not to breach the classroom because according to the official story, according to, to the police department there, they thought that this was no longer an active shooter situation even though that was there was literal dispatchers people from the police department people from inside of the school people from inside of the classroom telling them that it was there's a, there's a huge factual discrepancy when it comes to the police officers official story here since of course the police officers here have been lying through their teeth from the very beginning of this and now the official story is that oh we just thought this wasn't active anymore even though that's again another blatant lie since of course there's audio dispatchers people within the government that were literally telling them at the time that it was still active people were still alive lives could have been saved lives could have been defended just like one particular child that was shot and according to many experts could have been saved but was left to bleed out as police officers were kicking rocks outside, not doing what they were supposed to. And today we're also finding out that the, that the same police chief that created this travesty, that called the shots here, that told everyone to stand down, is also expected to join city council. This as we're finding out that only federal custom agents, after waiting 30 minutes, decided then and only then 
to take matters into their own hands and stormed the school themselves with a team of people. And they had to do this, breaking the chain of command, overruling the local police officers, and then finally jumping into action when, of course, it was little too late for many of those affected by this tragedy. Again, lives could have been saved here. Children could have been saved here. It's still unknown how many children would have survived, which left some people asking the question, is the local police department here underfunded, undertrained, and overwhelmingly the answer is is no they were well equipped very well prepared for this entire situation as of course this same police department literally held drills practicing this exact scenario in the same exact school just over 60 days ago yes 60 days ago that same police department in the same school was practicing this drill and this scenario. The local police department fund is up almost $250,000. They have received $532,000 from the government of Texas. The school district in that town received $435,000 in order to strengthen security. And all we got for it are these photos of the Uvlad Police Department that literally show them as well-equipped SWAT members, which they were bragging on their public Facebook page. They, by the way, are, are deleting a lot of their posts surrounding the drills that they just did a few days ago. A lot of their social media is being scrubbed by them. As, of course, it has pictures of them showing off about how mighty, how strong, and how awesome they are, when in reality they are the complete opposite of that. The school district in that particular city literally had an artificial intelligence program that was supposed to root out potential shooters of that specific school. It monitored social media. It spied on students. It looked for specific threats. The local, state, and federal government had almost everything that it could have to prevent this larger tragedy, and yet they didn't do this. There's also the larger question of what did the feds know here, since, of course, if you remember, not, not, not so long ago when we were covering the fact that the national security state was asking you for a lot of tax-paying dollars, to, for you to give up your privacy, for you to give up your rights in order for them to protect you from, of course, terrorists and shooters, and they're doing a horrible job at that. There's an extensive data collection surveillance system apparatus that spends billions of dollars tracking and tracing every single move, every single action you make, and these systems have failed, as, of course, we told you they were going to fail. These are systems that are meant to, of course, empower people people politically and not keep anyone safe. We know this since, of course, we interviewed and talked to William Binney, a whistleblower within the government that was telling you that, hey, the federal government here is not looking after threats. They're, they're just worried about bulk data collection instead of targeted smart collection, which could prevent possible dangerous events from unfolding. The government wasn't doing that. It's fair to say that most likely it's not just the local, it's not just the state government that's corrupted here. Most likely the federal government and the national security state probably had a lot of information surrounding this monster. What do the federal governments know? What did they know? Since of course there was clear warning signs here. Well, we don't know for sure yet, but as we're finding out from Buffalo, just, just days after that horrible incident there, that a retired federal agent allegedly was one of the six people that were in regular contact with the shooter in Buffalo. There's specific reports that even 30 minutes before this attack in Buffalo, this monster in that particular case invited a former agent to review his attack plans and watch his live stream. What's a federal agent being involved in all of this? Well, that's a serious question that I think a lot of people have to ask themselves as I think it's, it's more clear by the day as we've been screaming to you for a very long time in our latest video, Amazing Survival story that the police do not have any duty to protect and serve this video by the way worth a watch we're going to link it at the end of this video so you could just click right off of it but it shows you and highlights a very incredible story of someone that is my friend that learned a very important lesson that the rest of the united states is learning is that essentially you are on your own who's going to help you who's going to protect you 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 and no one else. That's a very important lesson that we've been drilling down on LukeUncensored.com. But we also have to note here that there are government officials, even though the government has been corrupt here, even though the government failed here on many instances, even though the government could potentially be more involved here than we even know yet, that there are sick, twisted, 
power hungry egotistical individuals within the government right now that are trying to use this event as a way to disarm people so they are forced to rely on TikTok dancing Facebook boomer posting yellow bellied cowardly police officers that in many instances created more harm than they actually helped people if it wasn't for the police officers stopping people that wanted to go after their children more lives would have been saved but because the police officers intervened and they decided to go after parents instead of a monster we now have a significant life loss that is absolutely tragic, absolutely disgusting. Let this be a very important lesson for you, your family, your community members. Share this video with, with, with all of them. Share these articles, share these concepts, share these ideas, and let them understand that in this world, the only thing you have are, are God-given rights, which some politicians are trying to take away from you, and your own personal responsibility for your own safety and well-being. No one else is going to look out for you. That's, th that's the truth. Watch this video with Joe Lazito right now. Click the link right now and prepare to be shocked at how crazy the state is willing to go in order to protect their monopoly on violence. I wouldn't be here if it wasn't for you guys watching and sharing these videos. This is why I love you guys. Stay tuned for a lot more here on We Are Change dot org.